I'm excited to be here with you today um, to talk about SignOps or Sign Inventory Solution. Uh, my plan for today is to just touch on basically some of the tools that you need and what I'll be using. I'll be showing most of this demonstration from an iPad, uh, but I wanted to show you some of the tools and then the iPad, and then we'll jump right into the demo itself, um, get in on a little barcoding and tips like that. So um, yeah, so we'll get right into it here. So what you need, we typically recommend iPads um, for running SignOps, especially in the field. It can run on a desktop browser or on a mobile device. You can do it on your smartphone, but it's optimized for tablets such as the iPad. And you can pick one of these up if you buy it directly from the Apple store, you're looking at a price of 450 bucks, so pretty reasonable. This would be for an iPad Air, uh, not necessarily the pro version. And uh, you may or may not, you know, this might not include the cellular uh, signal. So just some things to think about. If you don't have a cellular iPad, you would need a hotspot out in the field. Um, but that's typically what we would recommend for running these. Another thing is a uh, Bluetooth barcode scanner. And you can see that these things definitely don't break the bank at $29 on Amazon. And I've got one right here. I'll be using this same exact barcode scanner for today's demonstration. So now what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna transition over to my iPad and I'm gonna share my screen here. So you'll be able to see that. Okay. So what I wanted to touch on here, um, basically the barcode scanner, if I go to my settings and I go to Bluetooth, you can see there I have one called NT Barcode Scanner. And that's this little guy here. And it's connected uh, through Bluetooth to my, uh, to my iPad. So if I just click on there, I should be able to have some luck here. And you heard that little beep probably. Now you see where it says connected. It's just like the same thing as using AirPods, you know, connecting through Bluetooth to your mobile device. So I'm going to do that before I jump in here and start using the application. And just to clarify, so the, the barcode scanner itself, it simply is working like a keyboard that's Bluetooth to your iPad. So when you have a space that comes up on your iPad or something, you can type in information. It's the same thing, only you're uh, using a essentially a wireless keyboard. That's what the scanner does. So, so let's jump in here. We've got it separated on the top by these menus. And we kind of walk you through the workflow as you get into the application. Um, so basically enter purchases, I'm gonna start there and I'm going to select my supplier and let's just pick one of these and these are all customizable menus and I can jump in and say sign type and let's say, um, let's go down here and let's select one of these. Actually, I could type in an R1, um, show keyboard and I'm gonna say R1 cause I'm a, let's say I got some stop signs that would be an R1-1, select my stop signs, and I could, or I could browse for sign type. This is really a nice tool, warning signs, regulatory. Um, there's a great, that's just a great feature to have available if you need to look up information there as you enter your purchases. So these new stop signs I bought, they're 36 inches. They have a sheeting, high intensity. Uh, I don't need anything for the sign text. And I'm gonna to put today's date for manufacture. Actually, let's, let's back it up and let's do just the beginning of the month. And the manufacturer is, we're gonna say one, two, three signs. And let's say I purchased five of these. Okay, I'm gonna go ahead and enter that. So I've just entered those purchases. What that means is they're in my system. I now have uh, five, uh, I think that's what I put in, five stop signs that are, that I've purchased, but they don't have barcodes on them yet. So if I go back to the sign shop, I'm now going to assign barcodes. Okay, and this is where you can see the signs that I just purchased from ABC. I just entered them, I bought them. Now what I wanna do is I wanna tag them with barcodes. Here's a little tip just for speed and efficiency. You want to scan the barcodes individually before you put them on the signs. It might be a little easier for you to go a little quicker. So to do that, I'm just gonna tap on that line item. And now it says, hey, you've got five stop signs to scan. Now here's where I can come in and use my, my Bluetooth scanner. So let's try that. And you might've heard the beep. 
and I'm just scanning one after another. It says this one, the tag number already exists in the database. So that's good. It kind of is our built-in, um, you know, kind of a built-in safety protocols to make sure you don't duplicate efforts. So if I just take that one out, let's try one of these other barcodes that I have. Okay, that one says it's also in there. So, but you get the idea. I think the first one went through as far as scanning those, those barcodes. So what it does is now that, that took, uh, it basically assigned those barcodes to those stop signs. So now I've got it in the system. I scanned the barcode. I stuck the barcodes on the back of the signs. I'm gonna put those on my shelf in my sign shop. And now those are all ready to use. They're ready to go out and put into the system at any time. I could also sell those signs on the top right here. You see that option. And I can control this menu under the uh, admin menu. I can designate who my customers are. When I was at the county, we would sell signs to the townships. So I really liked having that functionality is to be able to sell signs out of my inventory and subtract them from my inventory. If I have uh, signs that don't have barcodes associated yet, you'll see um, it actually, my quantity uh, purchasers got five. Quantity consumed says one for my stop signs because I only have one barcode tagged to them so far. I can also see what signs I have in stock. That's this middle one on the bottom. And that'll show me everything I've got in stock. Um, I can see individual barcodes on the far left. It gives me the tag ID, which is the same as the barcode number. And uh, by the way, I should mention, this is what the barcodes look like. I don't know how well you can see that, but it's a little metal tabbed barcode. It's just peel and stick, but they're very, very durable. Um, very, very, they work super well for this application, putting them on the back of the signs. Um, so I can search by sign type. Let's just see if I wanted to do that. I could say, uh, let's say yield, and I could search for yield signs and those would show up there then. So easy way to see what signs I have in stock currently. I could also perform an audit. I'm not gonna show that for the sake of time for this demonstration, but if I had, uh, for example, we had one customer that had a, a natural disaster come through and really kind of took out their sign shop and they really needed to kind of go through an audit once they collected everything on, on what they had available. So, so those are your workflows for the sign shop. Again, now we're ready to go out and um, you know we're ready to, to go out in the field and start uh, using those signs that I have in inventory. So I'm gonna to go to the next menu on the top says in the field, okay? And now what I've got is options in the field. Um, typically what I'm gonna do if I'm out and about and say I have a, you know, a sign issue that comes up or I'm driving along the road and I see something that needs to be addressed on one of my signs, I'm gonna to go to that first uh, button there says nearest, I'm gonna select that. And what this does is it opens up a map that shows me assemblies and it shows me signs um, that are located in that area. So if we just zoom into an intersection here, I've got a couple signs placed there. I can see the assemblies. Now, what I can do is I can tap on that sign and it's gonna open up the assembly and then I can edit information on that assembly. Um, I can come down here and see what sign panels are attached to that post. So an assembly is a post and that could be, um, as we can see up here, I can select you know, what type of, what it's attached to, if it's attached to a post or maybe a bridge frame. What is that post like? What's the material like? Um, does it have any lateral bracing? What's the name of the road? And as I add new road names, it just comes in there as a, as a drop down. How many supports are on that post? If it's an assembly with two wooden posts, I need to know that here. Uh, which side of the road is it on? I can easily enter that information. I could also add comments about that assembly. So that's kind of the, the main thing is our, your locations start with an assembly and then you just attach signs to those assemblies. So now that I've opened this assembly, let's say I wanna add a stop sign to that assembly. And if you remember, we purchased one, we assigned a barcode to that stop sign. Here's the nice thing. And this is where the time saving comes in. This is all about saving time as much as possible. We don't want you spending five minutes fixing a sign and 15 minutes updating your database. So what I'm gonna do in this case, I'm gonna click add sign, the blue button down here. And I wanna add the stop sign that I added in my inventory. Remember it has a barcode on it. So I'm gonna just scan that barcode. 
maybe. Let's try again here. There we go. So all I did was scan it. Again, you would just have your little Bluetooth scanner, run, pull the sign out of your truck, scan it. Now, the only question it needs to know, it knows today's date for installation. The only question I need to tell it that it doesn't know yet is which way is that sign facing? In this case, I'm just gonna say it's facing south. Then I'm gonna hit save, boom. Now my assembly has a stop sign tied to it. And actually that's not a stop sign. I had a different sign attached to it on the bottom there, the weight limit one. But you can see how easy it is to add that sign to the post. Now, let's say for example, one of these signs on this post was bad and I needed to replace it or retire it. Let's first look at replacement. So our first sign there, keep right. I wanna replace that. I'm gonna, on the far right, you'll see a button that says replace. I, collect, I select that. What do you wanna replace it with? Again, scan the code, uh, scan the barcode on the new sign and it'll, it'll take you right to that and it'll add that, it'll replace it with that. Or how about the other option, retire? Click on the retire button. Are you sure you want to retire this sign? Yes, I'm gonna click continue, boom. That sign is now off that assembly. And now it's gonna show up in under reports, it's gonna show up in my retired signs. So very uh, convenient way of adding signs to assemblies and retiring or replacing those signs as need be. Now I've also got under here, I've got maintenance records on my assembly. So if I come down to the bottom, any maintenance records that I have on that assembly would show up here. Let's say I wanna add a new one. Uh, let's say the sign's been shot. And if I wanted to track hours and equipment, I could. In this case, I'm just gonna save it. And that went into, now I have a maintenance uh, item attached to that part of the maintenance records. Let's say I wanted to add a photo of the assembly. Well, I can simply click attach photo and let's just take a new photo here. Picture of my office there, we'll use that photo. And then I can say, um, looks like in that case, my, it failed on the upload. But the, the idea is you can attach those photos and be able to reference that uh, to your assembly. So really valuable information. You wanna keep that history. When it comes to liability and something, let's say a traffic accident happens and they're gonna come back it's all about the maintenance records as well as the inspections. And we'll get into inspections here in a minute. But that's really what we wanna do is we're trying to protect ourselves from a liability standpoint. That's the whole purpose behind the SignOps uh, program. If the assembly, let's say something's wrong with it, the post is damaged, it needs repaired. You can see there's a button there, uh, a little tiny toggle right above the save button that says needs attention. I'm gonna check that box and then I'm gonna save it. And then that saves, uh, it flags that as needing attention. You can see it added a, a little warning symbol up at the top. This particular assembly needs attention. And that's important because later on I can come back and I can easily view those and find out what I need to do to, to give it the attention it needs. And speaking of needs attention, that's my next button here on my menu in the field. If I need to see some signs have been flagged needing attention, I've got several of them already flagged, signs that have maybe been damaged, but I didn't have time to replace them that time. And maybe they weren't uh, bad enough that they needed immediate attention, but they are gonna need attention at some point. So I can easily reference my list here. Um, I can you know, look at my map and toggle that. I can also um, sort and I can be able to reference you know, and pull up that information on what, what those items are. I can either click on the uh, ID on the left, I can click on that number or I can click on the edit button by that sign. So let's say the second sign on my list, let's say I just went through and I repaired that or I replaced it. Then if I, I could just uncheck this or I could select repair, replace and I could save that. And as I save that record now, that's gonna drop off of my, it's gonna drop off of my list on the ones that need attention. So really valuable to be able to do that and easily update that in your needs attention uh, menu items. Okay, back to in the field. I can see what signs are overdue. So this is nice where we know that replacement is um, you know, very critical when it comes to sign inventories and keeping our panels current, making sure retro reflectivity levels are maintained. So many of us would choose just to do a blanket replacement when signs become 
uh, a certain age. So in this case, as we zoom in here, I've got some signs here and let's say right now, I've got a manufacturer date of 10 years. Well, what if I said, I want to use 20 years, I know it's a little long, but let's just say for all intents and purposes, you see many of those signs just disappeared from my map because they are not more than 20 years old. However, some of them are more than 10 years old. So I toggle that back to 10, you can see which signs show up. So a really nice filter to be able to use, or you can select the date. Okay, which date do you want to say, show me signs in that, in that instance? And you can go by date, or you can go by the number of years. Um, you can also filter signs by road name that are overdue. So I could say, okay, show me which signs are overdue. Let's just say Main Street. And you could just have your signs that are on Main Street that are overdue. It's just going to filter those signs by road name. And again, down here, we can see those signs in a list. So you've got your map view and you got your list view on those signs to be able to easily see which ones are overdue and which ones need attention. A very nice way to easily reference that information. Again, these are the things that are critical workflows when it comes to maintaining um, your, your sign inventory. Um, another thing we can do is we can hit flag all and flag all is going to say, hey, you're about to flag these signs that they're overdue. Are you sure you want to do that? Because what it's going to do is it's going to add that uh, flagged record to all of these signs that I have selected here. And so it'll, it'll flag those, uh, flagging those that are uh, selected. And so if I go here, and I click on one of those signs, you can see the red clock icon, which means this sign is overdue for replacement. And again, I did that by filtering by road name or just uh, flagging all of them at once. So that's really nice. It gives you control of what the age is and which signs you want to flag is overdue. Okay. So back to the in the field menu. Again, this is where most of our time is going to be spent when it comes to maintaining our field inventory, there's a button that says scan sign. This is just, if you find a random sign or barcode, you need to scan it and know where it belongs. Um, we had an example where one of our customers, uh, they, they had four signs go missing um, and they found them in a neighboring county and they were thrown in a ditch and they weren't sure where they were missing from. They scanned the barcodes on there it showed them immediately on the map right where they belonged. And they were able to go and replace those with new signs immediately. So really handy just to be able to scan a sign and, and look up that information. The next one is inspect signs. This is a really handy tool here where you can basically um, tell it your road name. So again, here, I'm just gonna select Main Street. And as I select that, which signs, if I'm just driving in one direction, Let's say I want all the signs that are facing south, then I could just use that, or I could select all the directions if I want to see signs that are facing any, any which way. Um, I could tell it a nighttime inspection. I'm going to go ahead and flag that because that's important. And select your travel bearing. I'm driving north, and let's just say I want to see, um, just show me signs that have not been inspected in the last five days. So I'm going to hit search. And now you'll see a list of signs pop up. These signs are, this is the order I will see these in as I drive. So as I drive up the road, I'm going to see the first sign I come to is a T intersection warning. That's the first sign I come to as I drive. And as I go past that sign in my vehicle, as I'm driving, that's going to drop off the list as I go past it. And then the next one I should come to is a stop sign. And I'll have another stop sign soon after that. But the idea is what I do is I either pass or fail these when I do this inspection. I'm just doing a windshield drive-by. I'm not getting out of my vehicle. I'm not going and shooting them with a gun. Um, that's possible, but for, for, for what I'm trying to accomplish, I'm gonna do these inspections using windshield survey method. I'm either gonna click pass or fail. So as I go through these, I'm just gonna pass those. And let's say I'm gonna fail this uh, all way plaque, and then I'm gonna pass the rest of them. What I'll notice as I look at these, as I look at that all way plaque and I click edit, 
what you're going to see under maintenance records is it's past inspection. But if you look at the bottom, it creates a maintenance records. It says it's failed inspection. And that just was from the workflow I just did there. So I had a, a failed inspection on that one and logs a maintenance record. But if it passes, like the one right above it, I go down to that stop sign that passed and you'll see it also logged an inspection record. So these are the critical, uh, these are the questions that the attorneys are gonna be asking when it comes to a, a lawsuit, an accident that happens. When was that sign last inspected? Um, if you're showing that you are maintaining these records, that's gonna be the proof that you need in order to eliminate yourself from the liability uh, from that aspect. So very critical workflows and important to have, have those. Most people are doing at least annual inspections, uh, ideally every six months. And you definitely need to do uh, nighttime inspections at least once a year, I believe. So it's nice to be able to have that uh, functionality built in. Merge assemblies and assemblies are something that's reserved just for app admins, which I am logged in as an admin right now. So you'll just see the top five buttons there. As a, as a normal user. Uh, moving on to reports, let's talk about reports. So now I'm ready, you know, let's say I need to do some quick reports. I need to see where, what my inventory status is. Um, you know, pulling up that information is very easy to retrieve from here. So signs and stock summary. Hey, you know, how many stop signs do I have on the shelf? Well, if I look down here, if I want 36 inch stop signs, I've only got one of those. Let's say I wanna see what other stop signs do I have? Whoops, I selected the wrong one there. So sign type, I could do stop. And there's my one stop sign, okay? So any other uh, signs I could filter there, it's gonna show me the total. So if you'll notice what I have in stock for rail crossing warning, I actually have five of those in stock. So it's nice to be able to have that easy reference on what signs I have in stock. I can also download that to Excel to do an easy export and share with somebody. Other reports, if I wanna see what signs I have in the field, I can do that here. And this is a summary. So a summary means it's adding up all the signs of that type and size in the field. So you can see, um, if I scroll down, look through this list, I've got a variety of signs. And let's say, for example, as I look at the all-way plaques, you'll notice I have four of those that are 18 by six, but they're HIP. So it keeps track of the sheeting as well. It helps you group and see how many you got. So I know I've got one sign that is engineer grade that's a all-way plaque. And that's something that I would need to probably address there. So seeing that summary in the field is important. I can also look at signs in the field on the top right here, signs in the field detail. So let's say I wanna see them individually and I wanna know what I have out there. I can easily do that here. So if we look at, uh, again, look at stop signs, I can filter those um, and see what I have for individual signs out there. Let's say I wanna look at speed limits. It can quickly pull up you know, what I have out there for speed limit signs. And I can easily filter those if I have a, a size that's too small or something like that, I can easily filter that out. Then I can easily edit that sign, go directly to that location and take care of that issue. Or I can verify it's in the field. Let's say this, this 50 mile an hour speed limit, I have it as high intensity, but let's say I'm questioning that. Hey, I thought that was diamond grade. I click on the edit button, shows me right where it's at on the map and I can go right to it and verify that when I'm in the field. So really valuable reports there. Um, to be able to reference. I can have a needs attention report. Same thing, anything that I had flagged as needs attention, it'll show those. I can also view the map at the top and I can download those as well. And I can see the map of, hey, these are my signs that need attention. Or I can see them in a table format. Also on my reports, let's say same type of thing. I wanna see what signs are overdue. Again, I can see that list. I can download that report, uh, easy to pull and extract information to download and, and get it out of the system. We, we like to make that very uh, user-friendly and very easy for folks to do. I can see retired signs in my reports. So you remember we marked one retired uh, earlier. And if we um, 
We can search by dates. We can search by type. We can search by retired date. So if I want to filter my newest ones, I can do that here as well. And it's going to go through there and, and be able to update and, and show me what's more recent. Uh, what are my retired signs and be able to easily visualize and, and see those. Uh, sold signs, again, which signs you saw earlier where we could sell signs to a customer. I have Township B on the far right there. It tells you the customer, the date, and what kind of sign it was that we sold to them. Lastly, on reports, we have this, uh, what's called data extracts, and that simply allows you to export your data from SignOps. You can download it, and it just comes right out in, a, in an Excel format. You can open up that, use it, share it, um, you know, easily utilize that data. Um, the other, uh, after the reports, you see on the top where it says admin, users can either be a regular user, which in that case, you're going to see the first three menus, sign shop in the field and reports, or you'll typically have one or two people who are admins. Now, an admin can control all of these custom menus. An admin can control sign types, for example. That's right in the middle of the page there. I'm going to click sign types. An admin controls what sign types do we allow users to see and use. So when it comes to purchasing new signs, you'll want to have it in your, in your sign types. These come preloaded with all the standard ones for sign ops, but just want to show you that the admin can control what sign types there are. You can do custom signs. If there's special text on a sign, you can certainly add that uh, under the admin menu there. Um, there's settings. So you can set your default location for your shop. Um, you can also control you know, user roles if you want to be able to do that. Um, you can also customize your menus for manufacturers. So I need to know who my manufacturers and suppliers are for my sign panels when I purchase those. That's where this comes into play right here. So you can see we've got some manufacturers that we've made and put in here and be able to control those. If I want to add a new one, you can see that's very easy just to go through and add new manufacturers to my list. Suppliers is the same way. Customers, very similar go in and easily add new ones. Then those will show up in the drop-down menus when I go to purchase signs and, and do that and take care of that information. Jurisdictions, if I do have a situation where I've got uh, multiple signs on a post and I need to specify, hey, one of them is mine, one of them is my neighbor, I can easily differentiate between those. And my neighbor's signs then wouldn't necessarily show up uh, in my reports. So that's where it's nice to be able to keep track of whose jurisdiction or who owns those particular signs. Uh, and then maintenance types, you can control your drop down menus. What do I want my maintenance tasks to be? Uh, one of mine, I have the retired or replaced, and those are readily available there as well. So uh, upload screen is kind of reserved for, again, our, our app admins. When we set up a new customer, if they need to import their existing sign inventory, we can certainly do that. And we use the upload screen to accomplish that with. So 